Hi, I'm the Total Joint Nurse Navigator here at Reston Hospital Center. We've set aside a couple minutes just to go over what to expect for same-day surgery, so if you are scheduled for outpatient surgery. So some objectives for this class is we want to prepare you for your surgery here at Reston Hospital Center. We want to go over the day of surgery, kind of the timeline on what to expect, a discharge checklist, and then we want to review a few discharge instructions. Same-day surgery, who is a good candidate? This is discussed during your pre-op appointment with your surgeon. So if you've been told that you're going to have outpatient or same-day surgery, you may be a patient who's having a partial knee replacement, a hip or a knee replacement patient with excellent health and mobility prior to surgery, or if you are having macoplasty partial knee replacement. Before surgery, we do need you to schedule a pre-op appointment here at Reston Hospital Center within 30 days of your surgery. The numbers behind me are for the nurse and the nurse practitioner Paloma. So if you are a patient that would like to come to Reston to have everything done, including your medical clearance, your labs, EKG, heart tests, uh, your MRSA screening, which is in your NARES, it is a one-stop shop. Now, if you would like to go to your primary care provider for your medical clearance, that is fine, but you still need to meet with a nurse here at Reston Hospital. We want you to bring the following with you. So any orders from your surgeon. I know that this sounds a little confusing, so the easiest way is just to bring your entire folder from your surgeon's office. That way the nurse or the nurse practitioner can pick out any information they need within that folder. Bring your list of all current medications, including over-the-counter, vitamins, herbal supplements, prescription medications. We need to know the name of that medication, the dose, and the frequency. The nurse will review arrival time for surgery, instructions for eating and drinking, your certain medications that you may need to hold prior to surgery. They will also give you the carb drinks and the special wash that you need to use the night before and the morning of. Before surgery, physical therapy. All knee replacement patients and some hip replacement patients are required to schedule outpatient physical therapy to begin two to three days after discharge. There are some possible exceptions for hip replacement patients depending on your surgeon. It may be a good idea to call your insurance company to verify your benefits and see how many sessions you are allowed to attend within your calendar year. Before surgery, prepare your home. We don't want you to avoid the stairs. Stairs are great therapy for your joint. However, we do need you to have at least one railing. Now, if you live in an older home, it's easy just to check your railing just to make sure that it is safe for you with a Phillips head screwdriver. We want you to remove any bath mats, rugs, or obstacles. We want you to have a clear path between the kitchen, dining room, and living room and where you're going to be spending the majority of your time. We want well-lit hallways, so night lights in your hallway, bathroom, bedroom, wherever you're going to be getting up in the middle of the night. Most of the patients that fall, fall in the middle of the night when they are trying to rush to the restroom or trying to go and get a drink of water. So please make sure you install night lights. Before surgery, equipment needs. Everybody needs to obtain a front wheeled rolling walker. So most patients have heard of a rollator with four wheels that swivel around very easily. However, they are not safe for our joint replacement patients. So we need you to obtain a front wheeled rolling walker, which is two wheels on the front, no wheels on the back. We've researched a lot for you guys and we have found that Amazon has the cheapest price. Their price usually runs about $30 for the rolling walker. Now, if you need a tall walker and you are above the height of 6'2", Amazon also has tall walkers, but they are a little bit more expensive. You can go to your drugstore, such as CVS, Walmart, Walgreens. They also have walkers, but they seem to be a little bit more expensive for you guys. Reston Hospital does not have walkers for you to take home, so please make sure you obtain your walker and bring it in the day of surgery. Now you will need a cane, but this will be started in outpatient therapy. You will be cleared by your outpatient therapist, or if you're a hip replacement patient, you'll be cleared by your surgeon on when it's appropriate for you to switch from that walker to a cane. Most of you will use a cane going up and down the stairs unless you have two railings, but most patients do not have two railings in their home. Bathroom equipment. Some patients may require a toilet seat elevation. If you are a patient who is struggling getting off the toilet now, then yes, you may go ahead and purchase toilet seat elevation for the first couple weeks after surgery. Day of surgery. The pre-op nurse will tell you exactly when to arrive for surgery. Generally, this is about two hours prior 
to your scheduled surgery time. The surgery lasts approximately 1.5 to 2 hours depending on the patient and the surgeon and you will either have spinal anesthesia or general anesthesia. The anesthesia will be decided by the anesthesiologist the morning of surgery and if you have any questions or concerns you will be able to ask during that time period. We also have a tracker board. The tracker board shows where the patient is during the surgical process, whether they're in the operating room or the recovery room. Please note that patients, families, and support persons are not allowed back to the recovery area, which is the post-anesthesia care unit. There is free wireless access for friends and family. We also have a coffee shop in the waiting area. The post-anesthesia care unit or the PACU, such as the recovery room. This is directly after surgery. So once the patient is out of the operating room, they will recover in the PACU area for about one to two hours depending on the patient's needs. They will closely be monitored by a nurse. The cold therapy will be placed for knee replacement patients and an ice pack for hip replacement patients. And then once you are cleared by the nurse and you are starting to feel well, you will be moved to the secondary recovery area. Now secondary recovery, the family member is able to come back and join you during that time frame and a nurse will come out to get you. You may still be a little drowsy from anesthesia or from the medication. The nursing staff will administer additional antibiotics or other medication that you may need. You'll rest in a recliner chair with your legs elevated and you'll pl your plan is probably to stay about one to two hours. Physical therapy will be down to work with you during your secondary recovery stage. We do have a practice staircase, so you'll practice stairs going up and down, making sure you're safe to go home. And they will also walk around in that area to make sure you are cleared from their standpoint. Pain management. You may have a nerve block or intraarticular injection before or during surgery, and this will be discussed with you prior to surgery. You may have that short-acting narcotic called oxycodone or roxycodone. This is only used for severe pain, and due to the potency, there are a lot of side effects that come along with oxycodone. A couple of the side effects are nausea, vomiting, constipation, dizziness, drowsiness, and a lot of patients just say they feel woozy. You may have some thigh pain, and this is normal. It's just part of the healing process. That goes for both hip and knee replacement patients. Discharge instructions. You will have a waterproof dressing, which is great. So yes, you'll be able to get in the shower when you get home. However, we do not want you to submerge this dressing. So no bathtubs, hot tubs, or pools. This will be written down for you for when you go home on whether you need to remove it after a certain day or if you leave it on until your follow-up appointment with your surgeon. It is normal to have drainage on this dressing. What these dressings are made to do is actually absorb any drainage that is sitting on top of your incision site. You will be able to contact me via my email address or my telephone. And actually what I tell patients with this is if you have any concern about your dressing, please feel free to send me a picture to my email. That way I can tell you whether or not you need to follow up with your surgeon's office or if everything looks okay. Preventing blood clots. Everybody is gonna go home on an anticoagulant, also called a blood thinner. We most generally use aspirin, either 81 milligrams, which is a baby aspirin, or 325, which is an adult aspirin. This is decided by your surgeon and is patient specific. Now, if you need something a little heavier, we do have other options, such as Eliquis, Xarelto, Coumadin, or even Lovenox. The purpose of this medication is to prevent blood clots, so you must take it as directed. This is not optional. If you have any abnormal bleeding problems after surgery, such as dark stools or nosebleeds, please call your surgeon's office. What should you expect? Bruising and swelling. Bruising and swelling. This is a normal part of the healing process for all joint replacements. Please do not freak out if you look down and you see bruising and swelling all the way from your hip down to your toes. It can last an average of two weeks or longer, depending on the patient, and elevating your legs does help with the swelling. Ice helps. We want you to ice as much as you can tolerate. The old school way used to be 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off, but that is no longer best practice. You may ice as much as you would like as long as you have a barrier, such as a pair of pants or a pillowcase. Try and get up and walk at least every hour while you're awake. A lot of patients ask, well, how far or how long do I need to walk for? We're not really concerned about that, but motion is lotion. So the more that you move, the better you will feel. As far as pain medication goes, if you need it, take it. If you don't need it, don't take it. 
Um, you may be sent home with some prescriptions such as tramadol or oxycodone. And again, we will give you all of that information before you are discharged. Please make sure that you start with the lowest amount of pain medication. So tramadol first. Then if a couple hours later your pain's not getting any better or it's getting worse, you would go ahead and take the oxycodone. Please be aware of the side effects that come along with oxycodone, such as drowsiness, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, and constipation. So on the slide behind me, you can see the discharge checklist. Once everything is marked off on that discharge checklist, you will go home shortly after. Don't forget, aspirin after surgery is to prevent blood clots, not to treat pain, and it is not optional. Have your first PT appointment set up within 72 hours of surgery, so within two to three days. We want you to bring your front-wheeled walker with you the day of surgery. Keep your discharge instructions nearby for a quick reference at home. We want you to plan ahead, so please make sure your home is accessible and safe. And we want you to take your pain medication as needed. Be aware of its side effects. If you don't need it, don't take it. Also, don't forget rest, ice, and elevation. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I would be more than happy to help. Thank you.